All right, guys. Uh, welcome to everybody who's going to uh, be watching this tonight. We're doing uh, Alter D and D. Uh, I'm here tonight with uh, Bjork Rock River, author of Altered Realms, uh, Matthew Barbeler, author of Crematoria Online, and R.K. Uh, Billiou, author of Primeverse. And um, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna get ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, tonight, um, B.F. Uh, Brandon is going to be our DM. So uh, if you have any uh, comments, we're probably not going to do a lot of reader interaction uh, until uh, the end. We're going to be stopping at about uh, two hours, and then we will answer uh, any questions, maybe hang out for like 15 minutes and uh, talk to you guys. Awesome. So do you guys just want to jump right into it? Um, yeah, we can, we can do that. Or did you guys uh, want to do some, hmm? some introductions or something? Um, yeah, we should probably uh, probably at least intro introduce uh, ourselves, our characters. Um, do you want to? I don't know if you guys want to just uh, do author introductions and then say what character you're going to play, or how you guys want to work this. Yeah, let's so, do that way. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, Brandon, you're you're DMing. Why don't you go ahead and talk about your books a little bit first? Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Brandon. I'm uh, BF Rock River. My uh, book, my first book ever, is Altered Realms Ascension. Uh, it's a lit RPG, not super super heavy on stats, but it's there. Um, it's important to the book. It's more of a dark lit RPG care, uh, series with uh, a non-human uh, main character, and it's an it, he's an NP starts off as an NPC, and then gets turned into a player, and has to kind of deal with the struggles of learning that his whole world was a lie and getting everything turned upside down. Some good stuff, good stuff. All right, Rob, you're up next. Okay, I'm R.K. Billiou. I wrote Prime Verse. I'm still writing it. I'm on book three right now. I've got a short story out also that you can get that follows one of the side characters. Um, and I also did a short story for the System Apocalypse Anthology by Tao Wong. Um, so I am playing Beauregard Nomregarden the third, a forest gnome who is from a noble background and is also a wizard. Mm, we're both nobles. Awesome. Matt, you're up. It looks like I'm the odd one out then. There's nothing noble about me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Hey, so uh, I'm Matthew Barbala from Australia, which is why I talk funny. Um, so I'm joining these lovely people playing Dungeons & Dragons tonight. I write the Crematoria Online series, which is kind of a dark fantasy Lovecraftian lit RPG with swords and flintlocks and blood blood magic and monsters and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just keen to hang out for the next couple of hours and have some fun. That's much excite. Um as, uh, as a lot of you guys know, I am Phoenix Curry. I write uh, The Realm Between. You guys are on my page. Uh, I am playing today as Adri Patman. She is a uh, warlock. warlock. She is also a noble. And I've never played as a warlock before, so I'm excited about this. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I already like have all my spells ready and my cantrips. Nice. Good stuff. Warlocks are interesting. I think they were. I like what they did with them in Five E. They they're a, they're a fun class. They're well received by the D and D community. I've never Sorry seen I play one before. So. Oh, man. Sorry about that, guys. My dog snuck into my office somehow. Dang dogs. Little little Harley. <laughs> so, so we have a paladin, a warlock, and a wizard. I believe so. Awesome. So, we are going to be playing a campaign called Uninvited Guest. It's from Storm King's Thunder. Um, usually lasts about two hours. And it's. Is it from level. Storm King's Thunder or is it a, an Adventurer's League? It's an Adventurer's League okay. uh, module. It's a one. Yeah. It's a one shot that that's done for Adventurer's League. Um, pretty, pretty standard. Um, now we have two people from noble background. We don't have anybody who's an acolyte, do we? Negative. No. If you had an acolyte, 
you get free stuff. Um, I mean, I can I change it. I don't pay for my stuff anyway. So I gave you guys all one the opportunity to kind of include a flavor item. Um, you guys want to say what those items are? So I have, so I know what they are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we should have talked about that before. So, uh, so, um, Burgard is wearing what has been called the pendant of parental control, and um, it is a magical pendant that allows his parents to check in on him. Okay. So I have uh, a tally ho rock. Uh, basically, it's a rock you keep in. Uh, your back pocket, whenever you sit on it, it just screams tally ho randomly. <laughs> uh, I also have a rock. Um... <laughs> it's like you guys are in prime verse. Uh, his name is Rocky, and it's a, it's a nice. smooth, circular little rock with a little happy face painted on it. Uh, and Uli believes that it is magical because every time he, he gets really angry and the blood loss starts to take over, he just has a little bit of a look at Rocky and talks to him, just has a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one and just calms him down. It's a magical rock. Perfect. Awesome. Rocky, the not really magical, happy thing. Magical. The placebo effect is a hell of a drug. Yes. <laughs> it works. The placebo rock. Okay, so... Sorry, because of my interruption, my dog. Um, Phoenix, can I get your character's name one more time? I'm gonna write uh, it. It's uh, Adri. Adri. Mm -hmm. Oh, roll initiative. And then we have Beauregard and Uli. Uli. Okay, awesome. Okay. And uh, hi to everybody who has joined us. Um, oh, wow. Bobble and the Goblin? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, so this adventure takes place in Storm King's Thunder. It takes place after Rise of Tiamat. Um, it takes place in the town or around um, Parnast. And a little background on the adventure is things have never been the same in Parnast since the arrival of the Cult of the Dragon. A small village in the foothills of the Great Peak Mountains, it became a docking port for the dreaded Skyreach Castle, a flying fortress built by the cloud giants used for the cult of the dragon to collect treasures from the surrounding region. While the castle was docked at Parnast, the small village was commandeered and the villagers were forced to submit to the will of the powerful cult. Some villagers, however, embraced the situation more completely than others. Through the cult's tenure and Parnast was brief, it, had, it has had enduring effects. Having plundered the town and the surrounding region of its resources, only a few draft horses and a sad old milking cow remain in town. In the surrounding areas, all of the significant game has been hunted down to satisfy the appetites of the numerous cultist troops, giants, and beasts. If that were not enough, a new threat looms. The force of bad fruel. The forces of bad fruel are now adventuring into the foothills in search of food making any travel west risky at best. It is said that the game is plentiful in the west on the weather coat woods to the east, but myths leg and legends of terrible fey creatures and other dangers have long prevented testing the validity of those claims. These desperate times, however, may warrant such risks. So you three have been tasked by the good people of Parnast to essentially get food. Um, so with the sorted of food, okay, no, here we go, here's the beginning. Skipped it. The adventure begins in the village of Parnast. Ragnar Redtooth approaches you, the adventurers, to help him host a feast for the town to celebrate the return of the statue of Ancarda. <laughs> Sometimes I hate these names. Ancarda. 
the tune, the Triune Goddess. She is the goddess of wisdom. Um, fierce, she's a fierce mother, protector of elfish people, and a consort to Carillion. With this shortage of food, Ragnar asks you guys and to get food for the neighboring neighboring forest to, for the for the feast. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's get this party started. I'm going to skip a little bit in the interest of time. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so you guys are in Parnast. Rangar is asking you guys to get food from the Western Village. Um, This, it's a pretty small town. There's not a whole bunch because everything's been wrecked by the cultists. Um, there's some shops. They're trying to build, rebuild everything, but they want to get a feast, you know, going to get everything kind of situated. <laughs> so would, what would you guys want to do? There's a, the cult has pretty much taken everything except for the milking cow, whose name is Gertrude. Um, there's no real late leader in the city. And the place is pretty disparaged, except for all the people who are now starving. So what would you guys like to do? Uh, I guess my money's not going to do any good here then. Uh, so um, Burgard has a raven as a familiar. And you see him. He's a short little gnome dressed all in black with a black drooping hat and what looks like could be interpreted as a black trench coat with lots of buckles on it. Um, and he's got a raven that perches on his shoulder. <clears throat> I guess we'll have to go and find you some food. Although, if you were dead, you wouldn't have to worry about that. It's a choice you can make, and I'd be willing to help with that. And as he's talking, his pendant lights up, Oh, Bobo, don't talk like that. Be nice to your friends. Ugh, Mom, stop it. And he covers up the pendant. This is my quest. Okay. Um, I am are we still in audience with Rengar right now? Yeah, he's, he's just kind of standing there, and he's asking you. He's like, yeah, um, we're super low on supplies. I... Uh, I just need anybody, really, that's still capable. Pretty much everybody here is all broken. What is uh, the source? Of the, what is the source of the lack of food here? Is there some evil that needs to be vanquished? Yeah, there was a bunch of cultists here, uh, and these sky giants or cloud giants and cultists, and they stole all our food. The giants ate all our cows, um, but eventually we kind of just ran out of stuff and another group of adventurers drove them off. Uh, they were kind of already on their way out, but they just basically stripped this place dry of all the resources and left. So there's no evil that needs to be vanquished. You just need food. Is that right? Well, see, the problem is there's no food in any of the woods around here. So uh, you're kind of have to going to have to go to these, uh, these woods that nobody really likes to go into the, to the West. If you want to find anything, I mean, you could kind of range around around here and see if you got anything, but probably unlikely. There's really scary beasts still out there that are taking everything that they can find, so the, the townsfolk can't really get get anything. And uh, these woods to the west, there are definitely there's definitely still food there. Nobody really knows. There's rumors that there is. Are there any rivers or streams nearby? Um, let me, uh, let me look at my map here. No, I mean, it's pretty much just mountains. Damn, pretty much I love, everywhere. I love just mountains, trees, rocky terrain. I mean, really all we got in these woods is chipmunks. So, I mean, are I you sure that. that you don't just want to die? I mean, I don't see how that would help the rest of the people. Life is wasted mean, yeah. on the living. They could uh, they could eat you. That would help them. 
Yeah. How many chipmunks do you facilitate. think we would need to deliver to feed the village? I mean, at least like what three chipmunks per people, so maybe uh, five hundred chipmunks. <laughs> Uh, if we have to go into the woods, I suppose I know something about nature, and I could take us there, and we could find some stuff. Uh. <laughs> Sounds like so much work killing all these chipmunks. It's gonna take us forever. Yeah, it would be kind of, be a, kind of a lot of chipmunks. I mean, there are there are other people in the village. They might you want us to eat the other people, huh? You want us to eat the other people? I mean, no. Oh, good. But they good. might know where to find food. Oh, like, okay. If we kill one person, like, imagine how many chick bunks worth of meat that is. I mean, and that's one less mouth to feed. This is and true. one free that is, individual. That is a solution, I guess. We there is no. You don't need a feast if there are no town folk. <laughs> I think I don't think that's a solution to the problem. I don't think that sits right with me. I, I would prefer you not kill everybody. Yeah. Chipmunks. Do you have any? Do you have any suggestions on who we should speak to about uh, other leads? Um. Yeah. I mean, there's a few guards laying around a gym. He might know something. Um. There's a shopkeeper uh, in the old near the old camps. Um, it's like a mining camp. There's a shopkeeper who used to run those mines, but they're no longer. We don't have manpower for them. Uh, his name's Alfred. And then there's uh, Stacy, his wife. She knows a little bit of local lore. Hmm. But you want us to go into the woods, deep into the dark woods and find food for you. The dark Ooh. woods of darkness. <laughs> Too dark. Uh, I believe those woods are actually called... What were they called? They, they were kind of overflowing with Xenthrum for a while. The Weathercoat Woods? Uh, I prefer yeah. my name. <laughs> the, dark, the Dark Woods of Darkness? Yeah, the Weathercoat Woods, there's there's lots of rumors that there's plentiful elk and deer. Um, it's said that they were, it's you know, guarded by fey creatures, and they're just teeming with wildlife. So can we, so, if we bring you back some fey creatures, can you eat them as well? I don't Maybe. like to mess with the fey. <laughs> you know what happens? You take one bite of fey food, and then you're stuck in their courts forever. Mm, that's true. That's true. From what I hear, they're probably it's probably best to avoid any kind of fey creatures or extra planar entities. But you guys are the adventurers. I have some. Uh, if you guys do get enough food to feed everybody in the village and have this feast, I got some amulets I can trade for, trade for it. I look down. I'd love to trade an amulet. What? Ones that oh, don't Bobo, make don't you be so mean. You know we like to keep track of you. Mom, stop. I'm on this adventure. Oh, Bobo, don't talk to me like that. Hey, son, don't talk to your mother like that. Oh, you guys, leave me alone. <laughs> so, so you guys want to help me get some food? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we have a, we have a choice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I let's do it. I suppose. So, so I, what would you guys like to do? He, he, uh, you guys could go, go to the Weathercoat Woods that have possible fake creatures. There are other townspeople. Uh, you guys could go slaughter a bunch of chipmunks. You guys have any <laughs> any option? The world is your oyster at this point. You could just say, I don't want to help this guy. I'm not sure that talking to anybody else in the village is going to help too much because he's making it sound like there's the, they're not going to know of too much more. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? They may long for the sweet release of death, though, and we can help them with that. Or we uh, can just go into the woods. No, I don't, I don't think we should be helping them with any kind of sweet releases that include death. Um, I think the chipmunks are a viable option. 
Uh, we just need to just put down our pros and cons list and decide a way to way forward. Chipmunks or no chipmunks? Mm, something bigger than chipmunks for sure. But chipmunks, if if we see them, definitely kill. It's, it's, it's always it's always good to have chipmunks as a backup plan. For sure, for sure. Then um, let's go to the woods, I guess. You hear a townsfolk walk by that overheard you and say, "I paid. I've had enough of the chipmunks." <laughs> you ungrateful bastards! <laughs> what we bring you? I've been eating chipmunks for weeks. You'll eat them for a few more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, I guess we're going to head off to the dark woods of darkness. Okay. So, before you guys leave, Rangar says, um, he tells you he explains again about the fake creatures, and then he says that there's a shrine. There's rumors about a shrine out there called the Shrine of Axes. Um, some one of the rangers who one of the rangers who used to be a guard in this village he is now dead the cult killed him uh as a sacrifice of tiamat and he used to talk about how he saw like a wooden building that looked to be some kind of magic it was like glowing and didn't see any people but this like weird intricately crafted wooden structure was just kind of sitting out there in the weathercoat woods and he said it must have been some kind of shrine or something. Um, but he said that surrounding that, there was a whole bunch of food. Like massive, like abnormally massive elk. So that, that would normally be, be considered, food. you know, living things, not necessarily food. But uh, well, I guess it's better be than food. finding like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although if there's like a bunch of cakes it. surrounding it, that would be cool too. Can it was filled with candy. Magical nice. looking candy. Awesome. And the elk? shrine of axes. Candy. candy. It was made out of candy. It was made. There was elks made out of candy surrounding it. <laughs> Great. Okay. But yeah, you said that might be a place to look. Place to to start. Can you show me which direction it would be to get there? He points west. Wait, that's not west. He points west. And says, "Yeah, there's a small passage through the through the mountains, and on the other side of those the the passages, you just see a huge dense wood, but it's kind of hard to trek through there. And then, kind of walk a few miles past the tree line, maybe about a day, half a day travel west. Okay, so if we go there to hunt elk, we're going to have to try and get them back to the village, right?" Should we yeah. maybe see if uh, there's a cart or something that we can talk Rengar out of before we go? Maybe okay. some horses? That's probably like a good idea. Visit one of the shops? Or maybe the, even no, or actually some people to go with us as, uh, you know, mules. People mules. People mules? <laughs> but we're, we're still, we're still outside of Rengar right now, are we still talking to him? Yeah, Rengar, you're still here. Okay, uh, so, so like, I don't know what you guys want to do. We are going to set forth and help the village as best as we can, but to be able to bring back enough food to help the village, we need your help. Can you lend us a cart, horses, any kind of mounts that will allow us to actually get to where we need to go? I mean, I'm strong, but I will only be able to carry half an elk back myself. We have, we have one, the only kind of large animal we have is an old milk cow um there's a silo that the, the merchant lady might might be willing to uh part with it but mm. i don't it's kind of lame and this just, is uh, why people need to use we have, zombies we have plenty of lumber in the surrounding woods but i don't know if you guys want to make a cart uh, i don't mean to uh i don't mean for this to be an insensitive question but did you eat all the horses? Yes. Yes, we did. They uh, were the first. Well, you we, just need well, to think, think really about the economy of this. Okay? All of the giants left to be able to go out and transport things back to your village, you need <laughs> things with hooves to bring those things back. If you eat the things with hooves, it doesn't help the matter. Don't you have any 
bags of holding that you can use. I know at my home, anytime we needed to bring something heavy, we could just stuff it in a bag and carry it. Isn't that common? Do you know how expensive? You, Ringer just looks at you. He's like, do you have any idea how expensive a bag of holding is? You just go around willy-nilly. Have you I also just, ever tried to stuff an elk into one? I didn't ever do any of that. I just let my butlers do it. They carried the bags for me. But, ugh, all this work. How are we going to get this food to you? Would you like me to resurrect the meat as zombie meat? No, no, don't do that. I don't know if that would be edible. I don't know if you can eat reanimated corpses. They might eat you? I don't see what? why not. Food is food. But yeah, but I that, mean, if, if you guys need help you're finding a way to get it back, Sila might be able to help you guys. But I don't have a cart. There's wood. There's the remnants of a blacksmith in the mine. Um, there might be tools to get to craft that stuff. But... Or even if we craft it, we don't have anything to pull it. Unless we're going to, like, kill your one cow... Uh, well, uh, we kind of need a milk cow. The do only you thing have that a rope around here is like terrible grains. And do you have a rope? A rope? Yeah, we have some rope. Sail has rope. She's our herbalist in general goods sto like store. We could lash it to the gnome. Lash it to the gnome? I don't think I would get very far. Have you seen my size? I can hide inside an elk when it gets too cold. I don't really know how to respond to that. <laughs> the inside of beasts is a comfortable and warm place to be sometimes. Oh, Bobo, don't talk like that. You've never been inside a creature. Shh, Mom, stop! So... so Take the time to build this cart. It sounds like we're going to have to pull it ourselves. What about people? You guys can make a hand have any cart. people that can come with us and we can just kill the things and they can bring it back? Um, you guys, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. You could, there's probably some, there's some dead ponies left over, maybe, that we haven't eaten. Um, everything else. I mean, all the all the large animals are pretty much they're giants. They just kind of picked them up, put them in their mouths, tore their heads off, and ate the ate them all bones whole. Everything. I guess we should go talk to this Silas person, and maybe they have a better solution. The final. Solution. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm game for that idea because getting getting this stuff back sounds like it's going to be a pain in the ass. So. Okay, so we're going to head off to, to this uh, Silas person. Mm. How far of a, a walk is it? Uh, Silas's hut is, you can pretty much see it from here, right down there at the end of the road. It's like the okay. only still standing structure, one of them, except for a few houses. And, uh, yeah, it's right next to her husband Smithy. That no okay. longer really works. So as we're as we're walking down there, I'm gonna to ask my compatriots here. Uh, can we just let these people die and leave them? This uh, is so I don't annoying. No, no, we have the power and the ability to be able to help. We have a duty to do so. Duty to help them live. Ugh. I say we bring them enough food to survive, and you know if they want to feast, you know they they're they're not helping us. So, you know if they if they can't help us, no feast for them. Just enough food to survive, and my conscience will be clear. Fine, I guess we'll go and help. So we're gonna get to Silas's place. Okay, so you guys head on over to Silas' wares. It's basically run down there's the items on the shelf is like general crafting like 
general supplies. There's some dyes, um, like half full bottles of bath oil. Uh, there's one bottle in the back or one bottle in the back that's like green, like a weird neon looking green color. Um, and a few just like random herbs and what looks to be maybe maybe potions. Um, and then there's one like a, a clay jug that just says Sila's wake up sauce on like a piece of paper that just stuck to the front of it. And then you see like a bag of nails and just like random assortment of stuff. Looks like she just kind of went around the town and just started grabbing stuff and put it in this makeshift makeshift shop. When we get into the shop, I stand next to the door and tilt my head down and tip my hat over my eyes and look very menacing and brooding. When actually I look like a six-year-old who is in a Halloween costume. So you're just... Okay, she's like, child, are your parents? Where are your parents? Uh... I'm laughing and barely, barely see you. She's like, child, what are you doing over there? Talk to them, and I point to the other two. We're uh, we are tasked really with babysitting him for now. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're babysitting Judy. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, we are uh, we are trying to uh, to find some good hunting grounds, uh, and we were looking for a way to uh, if if we wander off into the the wilderness and happen to kill some game, uh, help in transporting it back. Do you have any uh, idea where we could find some help transporting this, this stuff back, or uh, do you have any questions? Well, I have some rope. Um, my husband, he's a smith. He might still have some iron left. Do you, I mean, we don't really have any carts. The only... We might, I mean, I don't know. You might have to go to the stable and ask Chandra. Uh, there's not really any animals left in it, but she might have something. She's kind of just showed up here not too long ago and took over the pl- took over the stables. She's been trying to get more horses and and pack animal or you know big pack animals to get production going here. But may I ask why your people can keep eating their horses? Sorry, what was that? I can't, may I I can't hear. May I ask, uh, why is it that your townspeople keep eating her horses? Oh, she hasn't successfully brought any horses back. We ate the ponies. There was a few ponies left over, but they couldn't really. They were all lamed. Some of them were diseased. We ate them anyway. It was just like the scraps, really, that the giants wouldn't even eat. Do you have any regular trade that comes through? The, the village here? Um, some of the cultists fled. Uh, Rangard, I think he used to hang out with those guys. Um, basically, they sometimes when they leave, they're running. It seems like they're running into like bandits on the other side of the mountains. It seems like the cultists are fighting the giants now, and some of the cultists are just leaving. So when they come through, they're usually looking for supplies, but we don't have much. Some, usually, they just steal whatever they need and leave. It's probably why the merchants don't come here. They're probably afraid that you're going to eat their horses. Probably. I mean, I, I, I've eaten horse. It was good. Perhaps we should leave this village and seek other adventure. <laughs> That's what I was trying to tell you. Uh, but you well, seem so. If you kind of insistent. venture to supply us with some food. We might not have to eat the traders' horses. <clears throat> and you Maybe. refuse to eat your excess villagers? No, no, we <sighs> wouldn't eat people. Cannibalism is like worst case scenario. I wouldn't say it's off the table, but it's you know, it's pretty down there. I, I would Oregon, say that Oregon that looks all around and he's it. like this looks pretty worst case. <laughs> Well, that's what the amulets are for. We're trying to bribe adventurers to go get us food. It's like yeah, the only like, thing we were able to, to Not doing a great job of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
right now I'm, I'm, I'm here with the uh, Beauregard thinking we should just like kill you guys off because uh, <laughs> you're in pretty bad shape. <laughs> Life is wasted on the living. Yeah, we're, we're basically all just surviving on like honeysuckle and weeds and chipmunks. <laughs> We've all been eating chipmunks for they so long. They legalized that here now, huh? <laughs> weeds? Yeah. <laughs> Been legal for a few years now. All right, Orc. If we strapped a harness to you, how much could you pull? Let's get this over with. If I don't complete my gnome springer in a quick enough time, I'll be forced to listen to my parents. I could probably carry one large elk. How much could you pull, though? Probably still one large elk. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about really rough ground here. Dense forest, mountain pass. I know I look strong as, but um, there are limits. So Sila interrupts you guys, and she's like, do you guys have any gold? Because I have stuff to sell here. Like, if Don't. you're not buying... Well, we're trying to a, help you. you have, like, a trench we're, coat we're on? We're trying to serve your town. Like, what are you buying? You guys need anything? And she just has weird, like, trinkets hanging in a bottle, hanging from the inside of her little coat. Where, pray tell, did you get those if there are no merchants that come through this village? Oh, this is just all the stuff that we found in the village. You know, people, a lot of people died. Then people don't need their stuff. Like, there was entire families wiped out. There was a dragon cultist and giants attacking this place for months. Do you have any potions of strength maybe our strong friend here could get even stronger um i mean i have this and she pulls out a, a like a glass vial of blue liquid and it just has a giant question mark on it i'm not putting that in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she has a, a she pulls out another one from like a, a pouch like under her armpit and it's just this like bright glowing red bottle and she's like i took a sip of this and it made me feel better i'm not really keen on the armpit juice either <laughs> and then what else do i got um what's in the uh, what's in the wake up juice vial well i can't tell you the recipe to the wake up juice well i just before i put anything into my body i just need to know what it's going to do various herbs and spices and eleven secret herbs and spices. Yes, they're all secret. <laughs> Various herbs, spices. Uh, there's a little bit of holy water thrown in there to to make sure everything's clean. Um, it makes it makes you wake up. Okay, I'm I'm generally pretty okay at doing that unassisted. So I'll leave that it, one to you. you. It'll also. Uh, It'll protect you from some stuff, too. She says there's a like, weird mist uh, that surrounds the the Wittercoat Woods. That makes people wait go a little minute. crazy. Wait a minute. And this will help you. Your help you. leader over there is sending us off into some not weird our, mist. Not, definitely and, not our leader. Well, <laughs> what exactly is he, going on in this town? He's just the one with the pendants who said that he'll help us clear out the town and get food. So I, I uh, try my hardest to give the brooding, deepest, most gothmo um, intimidation that I can because now my um, my alarm bells are going off that there's something weird going on. Okay. So you're trying to intimidate her? Mm -hmm, with my plus zero. Okay. Roll for an intimidation check. Thirteen. Thirteen? She laughs at you. She just she looks at you and she's like, Get the, what's this kid trying to do looking at me funny? What is going on with this mist? She's like wait, six wait. years old. And she's just had enough of your shit. <laughs> so I just kind of I, I kind of lean lean down and speak to um, speak to the others and say, do, do you guys mind if we just uh, Pop outside for a second and just talk this over. Yeah. All right. Let's so go. I make a move for the door. 
I, I throw an evil eye at her as we're leaving. She, she Which uh, actually doesn't do anything. Bottle of wake up, ju- wake up sauce, and is like, if you go to the woods, you're gonna need some of this stuff. No, thank you. Yeah. No, 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 thank you. It's all good. Yeah, okay. I call these guys outside to talk. Oh. So when when we're outside, I just do a bit of a glance around and I try to see if there's anyone else who might be listening in. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's like very sluggish-looking townsfolk just kind of wandering around, but nothing. Nobody was near that. Is there are, are there any places around nearby where we might be able to be alone and not spied on? Um, yeah, down like so. Basically, the way that the town is laid out is it's just one main street with like little branching alleys, like kind of jut, like jutting off of it. And at the end, near one of the one of the mountains to the to the north, you just see like this campsite looking, like an old beat up looking campsite. But there doesn't seem to be anyone there. Okay, there's no like little alleys, or can we pop behind a, a yeah, house I mean, or there's, something? There's like a what, probably about another hundred feet down the road. There's a burned out building. All right, so all right, guys, let's go down to that burnout building. Uh, I just think that we need to make sure that we remain out of earshot of all of these so-called villages while we decide what we want to do. So I start making my way down to that uh, burnt-out husk of a of a, of a house. Uh, I will follow. So as we as we enter, I kind of lift my arms. I'm like, ah, oh, my soul feels at peace here. So we, yeah, when you guys get there, the the burnout building, what's standing looks like it used to be very intricately, like masterfully built. Like this place used to be pretty wealthy, um, but it's just after like months, like a, probably about a month, month and a half of just getting beaten down by cultists and giants and them fighting trying for resources and then basically just being stripped of everything. Uh, this once luxurious town is just kind of burnt, a burnt out husk of what it was. But this building has like one remaining wall that just looks, it's like made out of stone and any wood on it looks opulently carved, like has carvings and stuff on it. All right. Well, I back up to that wall and I make sure that no one can uh, approach me from behind. And I speak in a, in a very low, quiet voice. And I just say, this place is jacked. Everyone who is here, I guarantee you they're still part of the cult. If we All actually I know help- is if I was going to kill travelers as they came in to sacrifice to my dark god, finding a way to get them to drink my potion of awakening would be high on my list. Right. Maybe we and should go on and see what they do. That's a great idea. Uh, I, I, look, I'm not down with actively killing them. That's kind of a, a big deal for me. Um, but at the same time, I feel like if we were to help these people out, a, uh, allow them to continue surviving, we might actually be allowing uh, more evil to continue on in this world, which also doesn't sit right with me. So should we stall? What, what, what do you propose we do? I think we so- need to find out for sure exactly what the nature of these remaining villages are. I mean, that Silar person, they said that uh, Rengar was good friends with some of the cultists. Who's to say that he that Rengar isn't in with them? Good point. Good point. So as we're talking, my uh, amulet starts flashing again, and a voice comes over. <clears throat> oh, Bobo! Don't forget the reason you're on your gnome springer. Ugh, mom. Fine. So, guys. I mean, <clears throat> guys. The reason I'm here is because. <sighs> I'm being told by my family that I have to use my enchantment skills and not my necromancy. But that means I can enchant some people. Maybe I can charm them and we can get some answers. The only problem is once I do that, they won't be very friendly. I'm totally down for killing people, so. Should we just find someone alone off the woods and then we can interrogate them with my spells and maybe some pain and some death i think we we can try one thing before we before we do that uh let's let's go talk to rengar again all right i'm done you go on talk to rengar again yeah all right we're gonna head back 
head back to Rengar, and we're going to talk to him. So um, when you guys leave, start leaving the burned-out building, you see him like kind of heading towards the the stables, or what's left of the stables. So you guys want does to he happen to have a, a hastily packed bag? No, he's just kind of sauntering around. Okay. And he looks at you guys. He's like, "What are you guys doing? You guys going to go get some food?" <laughs> So as we approach, uh, I'm going to use uh, Divine Sense, and I'm going to see if I can detect any evil emanating from Rengar. From Rengar? So you you don't feel it, so Divine Sense, no, that's, a, that's not a check, is it? Sorry? That's I think it's just, call, right? it's like I think it just action. happens, yeah. Oh, no, it says um, Divine Sense uses, uh, takes one action. Three okay, yeah. Rest. It's just like a, yeah, it's like a game trip kind of thing. Yeah, so um, it's checking whether he's affected by Hallow, whether he's a Celestial Fiend undead so, within 60 feet. So if there's any of those, I should be able to detect him. He, he is none of them. But you do see, you do sense like a slight, like a slight, um, like at one point there was, like maybe something possessing him or something. But it's no longer there. Like the the taint of evil. But it's gone. So the taint is gone. He has no taint. He's not tainted. <laughs> that sounds painful. <laughs> what right. kind of operation do you have to do to get that? Yeah, poor guy. Very expensive <laughs> surgery. <laughs> so I, I turn I turn back to, to our two guys and I say, Hey look, I think some, some shit went down here, but whatever it is, I think I get the feeling that Rengar actually does need the help, whatever he's uh, involved with. Maybe we should help them out. I'm willing to try and strap two elk to myself, but I might need some help. I suppose the two of us could uh, could maybe carry one together. <laughs> maybe. So what, what you I, mean. <laughs> so well, I think we should. Talking, um, sorry. You hear like a female, like a kind of. Hey, are there travelers out there? And just like this scrawny looking half elf, like me, looks like she might be wood elf, uh, pokes her head out from behind the stable and she has like a like a leather like lash thing and she's like trying to tie two things together in there. Um, she's like, what are you guys doing here? You guys gonna give us some food? Did Rangar get you? We're going to try. We're going to try? Feed your excess villagers. I mean, uh, yes, we're going to get you some food. Maybe. Maybe we will. So she's like, I would really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are going to... Have you guys talked to Sila yet? Because that I, I used to live outside of the city for like decades. And I wandered into those woods once, and I couldn't see shit. But suppose, supposedly that blue, that, that wake-up juice or whatever she calls it, that'll help you. So I just, like, I give know, my I, partners I, the look, like, oh my gosh, here we go again with the magical juice. What? <laughs> well, it looks like we're going to have to buy this juice, guys. I mean, you guys could go. It's It's possible to make your way around in there. It's just... Hard. I went in there for like two hours, got lost. Um, do you guys have a way to bring back the elk or whatever you guys are hunting? I heard you guys talking about stuff. We're, uh, we're, we're working on it. Do you have any ideas? Well, I have a broken hand cart here. A broken hand cart, you say? How broken is it? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty broken. I'm a I'm basically a homesteader. I don't really know. I'm not a, I don't repair carts. I'm not a cart repair person. But you better sh- one of the you better wheels is off. Like. <laughs> is the, wheels is the other wheel intact and just off? Both wheels are... It looks like the one of the axles split and broke the wheel off. Or the axle split. Not one. There's only one axle. So if we took this to the blacksmith, do you guys think we might be able to... I know nothing about carts. Being a noble, I've never had to deal with this shit before. But... Uh, <laughs> Gundolin? Yeah, he might be able to fix that for you. Yeah, I think we should do that. Haven't you done this already? 
Gondolin's I see kind of why the work. rabble live in such drudgery. Because I mean, Gondolin. Have I mean, have you have you seen Sila? He's older than she is, and even more crotchety. Does he also have juice for sale? He doesn't. Sila's only the only one who spells that kind of stuff around here. <laughs> I think once all of this is over, we need to have a serious talk about these villages and their ability to self-solve problems. Um, if you can take us to your cart, we'll drag it over to the blacksmith. We'll see what he can do. Uh, so yeah, please show us where the cart is. So Better she, idea. Just bring she the opens cart to the, the door. blacksmith. She <laughs> fully opens the door to the stable and it falls off the hinges and, and lets you inside the stable. <laughs> And, like, the entire back half of it is just blown out. It looks like a giant hand scooped, just, like, scooped half the building away, and there's, finger like, giant, what look like giant finger marks in cool. the dirt. And just blood everywhere. And you see the cart, and, like, kind of weird that those, like, the divots from the hand, like, what looks like a handprint. And it just looks like maybe whatever reached their hand in there and ate all those but broke the building uh, like grabbed onto the wheel on accident and just ripped it off. This I'm place is so metal. I know, I'm starting to think we should just convince these people to move somewhere else. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So I'm going so, to get yeah, the car. It's missing the wheel. Anyway. The axle is very clearly broken. Um, but the rest of it is is pretty intact. The other wheel is still intact. It's like one of the spokes is broken, but for the most part, both wheels are fine. The rest of the cart's fine. It's just a small hand cart for like one person to carry goods in. All right, Uli, this is your show. Grab that thing and bring it to the blacksmith. All right. I I go over and I pick the cart up and uh, I grab the wheel and carry them both together and we head over to the blacksmith. Okay. Um, Let me have you roll a strength check. Let's see if you can just hoist the whole cart up. Uh, that is an 11. An 11? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you, I'll say you, 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 you bend over and you strap the cart to your back, but you have yeah. to, you're moving at like half speed. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So you're walking out. I've got I've got long legs and 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 um, Beauregard's got short legs anyway. So I'm just walking at gnome speed. Okay. Yeah, you're you're just walking super <laughs> slow, uh, and you're gonna walk it over to the blacksmith. The, the blacksmith is like on the other side, right next to the, you know, silo. Next to shop. silo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So cool. You're so I'm gonna walk over there. Um, I'm gonna set the cart down when we get there. So as you guys are leaving with this cart, she's like, "Hey." Uh. That cart's not free. Oh, no, is <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. This cart's <laughs> broken, madame. <laughs> she, she said, okay, well, you have to, if you're gonna have the cart, you have to promise me that you're gonna get the food for us. Uh, how about this? We'll take the cart and we'll get it fixed and then we'll bring you back a fixed cart. With food? I, I promise that by the time we're done here, one way or another, food will not be an issue that you have to worry about. Ooh, Can I get you to roll me a persuasion check <laughs> on that one? Sure, I'll uh, add or my plus zero. No, oh, wait, no, I have. Because I have a feeling like you're talking about killing her. <laughs> <laughs> no, just one way or another, they won't have to worry. Wait, perception or persuasion? Uh, persuasion. Yeah, okay. Twelve. She's kind of down. That works. She, <laughs> she lives in the woods. She's lived in the woods for the past three decades. So. Okay. So that works. Um, she's like, okay, well, if you're going to bring me food and a fixed cart, I don't see why you can't have it. Um, so you guys walk over to the to the smithy, and the forge and the forge, like nothing's running, but you see, you do see tools. You do like they're all broken. You open the door, and in the back, there's like not a lot of weapons or armor or anything. Um, you see a little bit of like rusted, pitted out iron in a stack, um, and you see like the oldest looking man ever in the back. He's like a hundred years old, probably older, and he's a human, um, but he's huge. 
and he has a long gray ponytail that like goes down to almost his butt and he's just sitting there in the corner half asleep eyes yeah. eyes closed and he says, what do you guys want I'm gonna I'm gonna specifically look for a couple of things I want to see if I can see a, a hammer uh, nails uh, and some spare pieces of wood can I see any of that lying around uh, the the smithy spare pieces of wood yes so there's spare pieces of broken lumber all over the city yep yeah, I mean, you could just go rip boards off of a building, and I don't think anybody would care. They're not going to try and charge us for them, are they? <laughs> I mean, I don't. You got to might want to see if somebody owns the building first. <laughs> okay. One way but, or another. So there's there are but there are boards pretty much everywhere. Okay. In this so does he have a hammer and nails sitting around? Anywhere? There was a there was a bag of nails at Silas' shop, and there is a bag of nails here. Um, and there is a hammer, and there is some strips of there's like some iron sheeting. Too, like pounded out iron sheeting, like not super thin, but but it's all rust. It's kind of rusted and pitted. Okay. Well, I'm going to approach uh, this old man. And I'm going to say, "Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you mind if I borrow your hammer? Uh, and would you mind parting with a few nails?" And while he does that, I'm going to lean into Beauregard and say, "It doesn't look like this guy's starving." <laughs> I'm going to brood <laughs> sullenly and menacingly for okay. a six uh, So you wanted to buy nails? No, no, I just want them. I don't want to buy them. You just want them? <laughs> uh, he says, stuff costs money around here. How do you think we're going to rebuild this town if we don't get any coin? What are you going to spend the money on when there's no merchants? There will be. Question mark. Maybe we should. Maybe we should just leave these guys and they can wait for the merchants. No, no. But uh, what do you need the nails for? Well, you see, we have a handcart and it's broken. We need to fix it. I need hammer, nails, and some wooden wooden boards to, to fix up the axle, so we can go and attempt to get some food for the village. Do you like to uh, eat? How about this? Um, ah, screw it. He just says, yes. Fantastic. All right. He just, says, he just says, I'll screw it. Yes. Excellent. Take whatever so, you need. And then he goes back to bed and you see a bottle of, you just see a, he's like trying, got, starting to go back to sleep and he just takes this glass bottle of mis, like basically sludge and starts pouring it down his mouth and then goes to bed. It's not blue, is it? No. So it's not wake up. He's juice. like falling, and then he just starts it, like. It's the opposite of wake up juice. Yeah. Sleep yeah. juice. Yeah. All right. So it's I'm gonna get. Wrong. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna get working on uh, fixing this cart or trying to. Uh, do you need me to roll a check for any of that? Um, let, I'm just gonna have you roll what I call a standard dice roll. So basically, there's no checks for crafting. And you know they don't really yeah. have too much crafting checks. Um, if it's like written in your character's backstory that he's a blacksmith or something, then I'll usually just say roll a check and you have you know an an advantage. Um, well, why aren't you just having the guy do it? I mean, he's, he's, he's drunk. drunk. Guy. He's super drunk. I don't want him touching the car. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna so get just down there. The, and so basically, just roll roll your dice. Let me know what it is. And I just do a pass or fail. Eight. Eight? <laughs> okay. So At least you didn't break it. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's where the narrative stuff comes into play. So you kinda pass. So you get it on there and it looks fixed. Enough to where you can't you to your eyes, somebody who's not a blacksmith or carpenter? Says it looks done? Oh, shit. We're both noble, so we would be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I have people for that. <laughs> exactly. So everybody in the group assumes that this thing is fixed. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm just going to give it a gonna wheel it backwards and forwards, and I'm just going to try and see if the it, it works. You hear uh, creaking and a little bit of crack, like creaking and cracking, but nothing out of place. 
It's, uh, it's got a slight wobble to it, but it's holding. You know what? If it breaks when we're coming back, we don't even have to come back. Well, we could also just pile things into it and, like, all carry it, but, I mean, it would take more time doing that. Have you seen me? Do you know how much I can lift? We can put it on your head. Me and him will carry it, and you can do it that way. <laughs> uh, is that a short joke? Yes. No. Oh. I won't stand so, for any short jokes. What if, uh, Burgard, you can, you can, uh, from what I've gathered, bring things back from the dead, right? Well, not exactly. <laughs> That's what I want to do, but my parents won't let me study that as much as I... <clears throat> my powers have not fully blossomed yet. So, if we were to kill two elk, you wouldn't be able to resurrect one to carry the other back? No. But once I'm done with my numbspringer, I can. <clears throat> I mean, oh, Bobo, you know you're not going to go into necromancy at the end of your numbspringer. You'll be an enchanter, just like your father. Oh, Mom, I don't want to be enchanting. Oh, you're so silly. I know this is just a phase. Ugh. Okay. I can cast uh, I can cast unseen servant, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think he'd be strong enough to help with that. Oh, I guess it's I guess it's up to me then. Uh, we've we, I guess we've we've got the rope, haven't we? We've got the rope. We grabbed that from the stable master. So, worst comes to worst, I can try and drag something back. We could always try and impale the carcass with wheels. Let's if not do off. that. <laughs> Let's not do that. I just picture a cart with like four or like two or four like chipmunks on instead of wheels. <laughs> and they're just like squishing the bodies as we drag it. Okay, look, look, let's go. We, we have options. We don't necessarily need to go for gigantic elk, right? There's going to be other things in that forest. We there can just pile wolves, up the cart with chipmunks. Wolves, hares, foxes. Yeah. Any number of things. We're, we're, we're focusing on the elk here. Like, I'm pretty sure that each of us could carry a wolf back. I could probably I could carry, even carry a chipmunk. Just one? Well, I don't want to get my hands too dirty. Okay. Well, one chipmunk for you. I can carry two wolves. So you guys are like still right out front of this, the Smith's shop talking, right? Yeah. yeah. I think we're, so, we're about ready to go. Can I get so while you guys are talking? Can I get one of you guys to roll a perception or, oh yeah, a perception check? Or can I get all of you guys to roll a perception check? Sure. Because things are just starting to get a little bit noisy I'll from use the north north Copper. Oh, yeah. Ooh, my copper mines failed me with a one. It's like becoming midday after you guys spent some time fixing the car, gathering all the supplies. I got the past midday. Thirteen. That's an eleven for me. 13, 11, and a what? Uno. A one. So you don't hear anything. <laughs> like, there's noises I'm, going off in the background, and you just can't hear them at all. I'm, um, I'm focused on looking so, at my hands, wondering how dirty they should, they'll have to get. So, from... So, it was, Ari, you got a 13, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. No. Oh, wait, sorry. Our names are so similar. Audrey and I. So you hear a bunch of what sounds to, sounds like drunk people talking off in the distance to the northwest. Kind it of is towards a like of inebriation. Yeah, they're like just a bunch of slurring words, uh, drunk people, but they seem very lively compared to the rest of the townsfolk. Everybody in this part of the town has been kind of shambling around, but these people seem like not. They seem kind of happy. And I bet, drunk, I bet really they drunk. found an excess villager. They're going to eat him. They've already so, started the feast. But yeah, Let's there's like, see, and, and like, what as it gets louder, it sounds like they're singing. People are, you start to hear like clapping and like very festive sounding noises that are very, uh, that are kind of out of place in a very somber city. We should definitely go investigate. We, yes, absolutely. Okay. And you guys take your cart? 
I think. Am I saying? Wait, wait, guys, where are you going? <laughs> Okay, what do you, yeah, what do you guys want to do? Let's take the cart with us. That, that way it can be a test to see if my... I hopped in the cart. Actually work. You hopped <laughs> in the cart? Yep. It immediately starts just wobbling, but it's holding. <laughs> I just, just like... I just, it looks I just like it's... Sigh. It looks like <laughs> it's it's holding, or it's holding, but it's, it looks like it's going down a really rocky, bumpy road, but it's not. I say it looks like it could hold a very small boar. <laughs> so, are you yeah, what do you guys want to do? I need to go on a diet. Are you guys going to go in- investigate the, the noises? Yeah, yeah. Little little emo kids in my cart, and I'm going to push him like he's a like he's a baby in a pram. Okay, so you're just like wheel like a wheelbarrow. Guys, <laughs> do you see that? There's some kind of party going on there. Ugh. So yeah, so you guys make it down towards the edge of the road, towards the end of the road going north and then off to your west towards the like pathway towards the mountains you just see like a very intact in maybe you know half a mile down this road a very Did intact wander there? Pristine looking in and there's just like a bard in there and a bunch of drunk people out front and it seems pretty lively and this like fest like festival that Ragnar wanted to get going. It seems like it's already started, but without food. And there's like a statue. Makes your alcohol like, work better when you don't have food. <laughs> there's like this statue of this goddess that looks like it's going to be propped up in in front of the. They're like they're going to raise this statue and place in front of this inn. This got this statue of the goddess of wisdom. Can I or, can I, I do a a, a check to see that the statue is of the goddess of wisdom or is it of something yeah, else um, like does it have maybe tentacles coming off of its chin yeah there's a uh roll me a would that be religion or yeah uh, roll me a religion check how about arcana can i can i give you that one? Oh, i can do it arcana here. religion religion check arcana you can okay. see if it's magical if you roll an arcana check okay i'll do i'll do religion let's let's roll uh 25 25? That was, a, that was a net 20. So, yes, the statue is of the... What's her name? The goddess of wisdom. Her name is... What's that? This one so it's not out, it's not the uh, goddess of trickery and soul consumption. No, 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 no. It's okay. it's the goddess goddess Angarda. Weird, A N G H A R R A D H is how you spell her name. Oh, you humans have so many gods. <laughs> it's so disgusting. Um, but she is a. But you do know that she is commonly associated with moonlight mystery. Love, beauty, wisdom, um, art, um, all of life's mysteries, including mysticism, prophecy, death, and dreams. Um, in legends, these goddesses, she is one of the goddesses that is also considered a separate entity uh, from the rest of the like pantheon of gods. And some people relate her to the fae. So do these people, do any of them have, like, weird cloaks on or hoods or no, anything like just, that? No, they all look like, like hungry villagers. villagers, but they're, like, happy. Okay. They're just happy. They're just, they look, they all look, and look, like, if you want to look really closely, you can give me a perception check. But from, like, first glance, they just look like really drunk, happy villagers. And they're starting Ugh. to, they're starting to bust out, like, you see what looks to be an innkeeper rolling out like a cask of shitty booze. Drinking on an empty stomach is never good. Never a good idea. This party's too mainstream. Let's go to the woods. Um, so yeah, what do you guys so want to do? I would like to ask somebody, whoever's standing closest by, uh, what exactly is going on or what they're celebrating. So, um, you guys get to this inn with your shoddy cart and you have a gnome in the back 
Um, you have Beauregard the gnome in the back, just kind of hanging out. And you stop, and when you do, you kind of see a Rangar kind of like shuffling down the road behind you guys. Um, and in the corner, like on the on the above the above the door on the bar, you see a a yellow tankard, just a, like the insignia of the of the inn is a yellow tankard, and underneath it it says the yellow tankard. Um, and you're asking what they're what they're dancing for, like what they're doing here. Yeah, what are, what are they celebrating? Uh, so they're celebrating the upcoming feast that Ringar. Uh, Ragnar uh, said is going to happen. Of course they they're are. They're prematurely celebrating because they think a bunch of food is coming because these glorious adventurers have come to provide food for them. There's a whole um, subreddit for that. He has already promised the town that you guys would help them. Um, and he wants to hold this feast in kind of celebration of raising this statue that they spent all their money to commission. Oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're, they're super happy about I need this to run for the mayor. What? I think I need to run for mayor for this village. They need some good <laughs> leadership. <laughs> so they, yeah, they kind of, they kind of blew all their money um, buying this, like putting up the statue and they're prematurely celebrating because everything is going according to plan and uh yeah they think everything's going to be peach keen and a bunch of nice adventurers are going to are going to help save their village they are wrong <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what your definition of save is the buildings will be fine <laughs> This guy's gonna get eaten. Is what's gonna happen if we don't deliver? They're going to they're going to eat this uh, this Ragna guy. If we don't deliver, and I might be fine with that. I might be totally fine with that. He will have <laughs> proven that he is the excess. <laughs> exactly. And and uh, then we can have Uli run for mayor, and all their problems will be solved. <laughs> so are you guys gonna take over this town? Because I will allow that. You guys can do whatever you guys want to do. This is your game. I'm just going to uh, tell you who's inside. I can't lower myself to that. That's so disgusting being around these filthy humans for that long. It's bad enough that I have to uh, touch their things. Let's go out and get them their stupid food so I can finish my quest and get home. Uh, I'm going to step forward and I'm going to try and persuade some of the crowd uh, who are inebriated uh, to join us on our quest to bring food back to the village. Nice. You're gonna, so you're going to persuade them to what? I'm going to try and persuade them to join us on our quest to bring back food for the village because I know that these guys are inebriated and already open to suggestion. Okay, so you want to persuade them to come along with you. Roll That's a right. uh, persuasion check. Uh, that, that's a three. That's a three. <laughs> um, so one of the one of the villagers who seems happy um, and super drunk just tells you to feck off. I'm not going to go fetch you. You're stupid. You're, I'm not going to go with you and put myself in danger. So, seeing that he failed, can I, since they are drunk, can I use my feminine wiles to also try to persuade instead? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Right. So, a, I rolled an eight. An eight? An eight? Uh, he looks at you and is like, I'm not going on no stupid quest. Uh, but I'll, you know, if, if you want a drink, and he, like, goes and gets a, a wooden tankard with holes in it. And he tries to start filling it up. He's like, I'll get you a drink. And he's shaking. And then he's if like... it's free, I will take it. And then so, he uh, he leans in and he's like, you guys want to know a secret? Always. Listen. And he's like, that Ragnar guy is a freaking traitor. He's not to mm -hmm. be trusted. You know, he worked with them cultists, right? 
I never trust him. I mean, he got you guys here, so I would appreciate the help, but I don't know. And then his buddy comes up and he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. He's super, he like can't even see, can't stand. And he's like, if it weren't for Ragnar and him working with those cultists, they would have just killed everybody and destroyed the whole village. He's the one who saved us. And then he, so, falls, um, he falls over and hits like just. So how big of a guy is this Ragnar guy? Um, he looks, he looks like he may have been a fighter at one point. Um, he may, looks like he's, you know, seen some, seen some stuff, but he also okay. looks like he hasn't eaten in a long time. Um, and he's and drinking as he, as he starts walking up, he, you see him just start like some people he's like patting on the back. Some people are avoiding him, but then he pulls out a key and he like unlocks one of the side doors on the end and he like starts wheeling out more of the the booze they have no food but they have all this booze yeah Ragnar owns the Ragnar owns the end so Beauregard rolls his eyes at his two compatriots and says I guess I have to do everything myself and then casually casts charm person on Ragnar Wisdom fifteen save. Okay. Um, oh, he he fails miserably. I got a four. Great. Okay. So yeah, he fails. Okay. So he is officially charmed. Okay. So, Ragnar, tell me, would you like to go on a quest with us to help get food? I think you'd be a big help. Um. Yeah. Uh, sure, I guess. Um, you'd be a hero a new, to the town. Quest, but I mean, whatever. You guys are nice guy. You guys are all all out here trying you'd to help be regarded us. Regarded as a hero. All those come with us. And stories are all hogwash anyway. There's no monsters or fey creatures or demons or anything out in those woods. That mist is just fog, right? You all tell me. People are lying. Is the no, mist I, don't believe it. I don't believe a word of it. Great. Have you uh, always had the town's best intentions in mind? For the most part. <laughs> Good to hear. Then I think you'll be a worthy compatriot to have with us. So I've I turn my back to my bubble. two party members. <laughs> Above everything, We've got an but... hour before this wears off. Let's try to be in the woods when it does. <laughs> I, I, I have one question for, for Ragnar before we leave. Okay. He owns he owns the, the the brewery right. He makes he makes the alcohol. Yeah, he owns the the tavern that like also is acting kind of as an inn. But does he actually make the booze himself? No, this is also just what was left over. This is like the swill. Oh, dang! They've been storing it up. So what he does is he tells you a little bit about what's going on a little bit more since he's been charmed. He just starts opening up, and he goes, well. I kind of commandeered all of this stuff after the city was destroyed. The, I bet you did. I used to run with the cultists. Um, they wanted to leave somebody in charge of the city. I was from the city. And rather than me staying behind and burning and killing everybody, I kind of got everything back together um, for as well as I could. But yeah, I took everything everything that I thought valuable, so booze and food. Did you happen to burn or kill even anybody? Burn and kill? No, I didn't Or burn just kill? Oh, I've killed a lot of people. From the town? No. This is my All home. Right. I only started well, working. I mean, if you saw some dude breathing fire and summoning little mini dragons, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm, why don't you why don't you gather your stuff that you would need to go with us? Get a weapon and let's go. A weapon? He he pull from his from his side he pulls out a big old meat cleaver. And that's like all he's got. Well that'll help with the elder. And, and then he It looks like you're ready. Boot. He pulls like a jagged rusty dagger. And he's like, I got these. So I hop back in the cart and I motion to Uli. Onward. 
<laughs> All right. So I grab the cart and I start walking out. And uh, I follow them sniggering the whole time. Okay. Um, With our wait, why, why are you pushing the cart? You should have a uh, Ragnar do it. Save your strength. Hmm. Hmm. Good point. Oh yeah, there we, yeah. Let's do Ragnar that. Says, let's I can do, do that. that. I can do that. I'm, I'm just happy to help. <laughs> and Ragnar's like formerly huge muscular arms are that are all withered. He pulls them. He pulls the cart up. And he's all creaking. He's trying to help you lift, and it's all wobbly. So, and he's drunk. At point, because so Ragnar kind of like, is my good acquaintance, my positive acquaintance. I'm going to toss him a field ration from my pack, so he can have something to uh, eat and keep his strength. Also, um, okay. So it's uncharacteristically so characteristic. And. So while you guys are like, so what? You guys pick him up. He's helping you guys carry the cart, and you guys are just heading towards the wood, yep. woods. Um, what time is it? Yeah. By the way? So is it's it like, like it's, it's probably it's like afternoon, almost okay. got like, you know. They were doing stuff. some heavy day drinking. <laughs> we're yeah, gonna crack not- these casks open at ten a.m. Okay, so let I will skip all of this. So you guys, the hunt begins. The hunt begins. Um, okay, so you guys are traveling down a like you guys leave the, the like rocky terrain and you're heading towards the woods and you're fun- when an hour farm- passes yeah. the spell wears off. <laughs> so yeah, you're it, about an hour hour into it, you s- see the woods. You start seeing them in the distance, and the the terrain kind of starts slowly turning into a uh, like a rolling glade with with brooks thickets. Like small little streams, uh, but thick, endless trees in the distance. So and then, uh, when the spell wears off, he Rengar, knows that he was Rengar, charmed too. Yeah, Ringar wakes up from his charm, and he just like, flirt, like tries to flip the cart over, but he's too weak, so he just gives up, and he's like, "What the hell am I doing out here?" And he <laughs> lifts up his cleaver and his dagger. And he's like, what'd you guys do to me? And he points at you with his little dagger. And he goes, who's, oh, who's you? The little gnome. Okay. Who he's getting man- magical angry tinglings from. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, what the hell did you do to me? Look, we needed to get out here and get moving. And we needed someone to come with us. They were talking about you like you were a member of the cult. You admitted it. You're already out here. You're coming with us. It's either that or you can be the next meal. Take your pick. Me? I can barely hold these damn cleavers. What the hell do you want me to come with you for? I gave you some food. (laughs) His arms are all like barely limply hanging after an hour of holding this heavy cart. (laughs) And he's like, if you wanted somebody to go with you, you should have. You should have asked the, the smith. He has a son named Wallace. Yeah, but you promised everybody that we were going to bring food, and you had this pre-party. So, yeah, you kind of you kind of owe this to your people. In a sense, we're helping you specifically from the anger of your village. <laughs> and also, uh, think of it this way. If you go back and you return triumphant, you will be a hero. If I die... You guys then, won't get your reward. You'll well, still be you, a hero, though, because <laughs> you'll be food. Well, and if you die, Uli will take over, so... <laughs> Uli so will take over. We're off for it. Exactly. Look, I'm yeah. happy to carry your torch, Rengar. <laughs> Just not the cult part of it. So you're trying to get me killed so you can take my in? Is that what you're saying? What kind of adventurers are you? No, 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 no. Don't take it. Take care of it in the unfortunate event of your passing, if it occurs, <laughs> which I hope it does not. I'm going to have to pass. So I cast uh, the okay, spell. I, so I cast the away and put the hands of up, friends on him. He's all he pissed and he's like, away. I don't want to go anywhere with that magical gnome feller. So I cast friends on him, which is a cantrip, <laughs> um, which makes him regard me as a buddy. Um, let me check the how long that lasts real quick so he's already pissed at you yeah well i'm not like super hostile hates you he hates you okay so 
and he was about to attack you, but his arms are like falling off because he's all right. So he it's concentration up to a minute, but he's he regards me as a friend again for a minute. Yep, and then he okay. he realizes again that he was charmed. And I'm like, look, I can do this all day long. <laughs> so why don't you just come with us? It'll be a lot easier. So is there a save versus friends? It's like a um, wis- wisdom saving throw? Let me see. Whatever it is, he failed. I rolled a three. Oh, no. What it does is it, it doubles my charisma checks on him. So I have to try and persuade him. Yeah. So Okay. So you're trying to persuade him. Yep. Um, I Let's see here. I want to use the one that gave me a nat 20 last. So. Uh, 15. So you rolled a 15? Okay. So, no, no. I got a 15 total. Oh, 15 total. So, yeah. That... Barely meets it. So he is like not going to kill you immediately. <laughs> he he no long he he looks at you hesitantly and goes, Okay, I won't murder you or try to murder you for using magic on me unwillingly and forcing me to carry your cart. What again what I say is good day, sir. He's, or he says, good day, sir. I'm not helping you, but I ain't going to attack you either. Rekha, do I have to put you in the cart myself? He just starts He starts sauntering back towards down the road. He says, good luck in the woods, fools. If you want your amulet, bring us the bring, amulets, bring us the food. Do you have these amulets on you? You say, Wait, what do you whisper? I whisper, let's kill him. <laughs> and I whisper back, no, no, we can't kill him. <laughs> Why can't we? You're so against killing. Uh, life is wasted so on the living. Is, he doesn't even know. Are to murder this guy? He might have the eminence. We could check him after he's dead. There you go. <laughs> we'll come back heroes. Look, we got our amulets. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what do you guys yeah, what do you guys want to do? He starts he he like stops being immediately hostile and because your persuasion check, he like thought about going with you, said nah, screw it. I'm gonna get well, so after a minute then, also he realizes that I used a spell to make to, to persuade him better. <laughs> so he gets about seventy feet down the road and then just turns around. Re get re picks oh, up no. his weapons and just charges at you. Oh no! Me specifically or or us? Just you. Okay. Just weapons so up, I like, out the mouth. Looks rabid. Is going I, to kill. I you. motion to Uli. I'm like, look, he's attacking us. I, we have I to quickly, put him down. And he's like, my, six grab, my shield, feet. grab my shield, grab my sword at the ready, but I stand in front of Beauregard. Okay. So you're just. Plant like shield plant. Okay. Yeah. And I stand role, behind Uli, like standing behind people guarding me is, is totally to normal. Rango Rango is attacking you guys. Let's roll for initiation. Do we really have to? Because like he's a villager that's almost dead anyway. I don't know. I, don't know uh, I got eleven. I got 11? ten. Okay. Who got the ten? Me. Okay. And then, Uli, what'd you get? 13. 13? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so Rengar goes first. And he's literally, he makes it, so he just charges you. He makes it about 50 feet. And then just hurls the rusty dagger at the gnome. At okay, now do I, I have cover because I'm hiding behind the giant half orc with a shield. What kind of shield is it? Uh, it's like a like one of those. It's the same shape as like a Hylian shield. It's like a one handed shield. Okay, so it's a, not, a heater not, shield. Not massive. It's not like so, a tower and you're shield. Behind him, right? Okay, so it's just a regular shield. Yeah, and I'm behind yeah. him. So he's going to roll to attack you with disadvantage. So the lowest. So nine. Okay, does a thirteen hit you? No, a twelve. Sorry. Me? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say that I cast shield. 
because yeah, that would hit because I don't have any protection whatsoever, but I will cast shield, which gives me plus as a reaction, which gives me plus five to my AC. So it does not hit. Okay. So it flies at you and a magical force field pops up and just like hits it and just this like shitty rusty dagger just like hits the shield and falls on the floor at your feet. Tink. It just tink. It like barely, he had good enough aim to make it around the shield. But it hit your not shield. Not the spell, the actual but shield. But not the spell, yeah. So he doesn't do any damage and he's made all of his movement and that's the only attack he can do. So now it's Uli's turn. All right, well, I am going to uh, go up to meet him and I'm going to try and do a backhand shield, shield bash kind okay. of attack, like it's just a bludgeoning one. Okay. So is that classified as unarmed strike? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think you, I think if you have, there's like a talent that lets you, that gives you like a shield bash. Yeah, I don't have that one. I'm just, I'm just trying but to yeah, stop let's him just do strike. an unarmed strike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, trying to not do lethal damage, but I also so want to stop him damage. So the way I, yeah. So the way I do non-lethal is as, as long as you declare non-lethal, I'll make yep. it so it won't kill him. Okay. Uh, well okay. that is, uh, yeah, that is an 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. That <laughs> like super hits. Can uh, I not and... lethally magic missile him? <laughs> so I'm just going to do an unarmed strike, a uh, non lethal unarmed strike, which is four damage. Okay. So he has taken four. Okay. So he's pretty hurt. Um, you smash him with your shield as he's charging, or like you walk up to him and just, and he gets hit in the face and you rolled an 18, right? So what I'll say is he kind of like staggers back five feet too, and is like kind of off balance. So the next person would be Ari, you get advantage. I'll say you get advantage on him because he's like staggered a little bit. You hit him with an 18 and his armor is like 10. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm do it because it was called, but I'm doing Eldritch Blast. Okay. Nice. So uh, can you can you make it a non-lethal Eldritch Blast? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do non-lethal. Um. So yeah, it's actually going to be a uh, twenty-two. That nice. hits him. That really hits him. Okay. Did you crit on that? No, I didn't. It was eighteen, oh. and then I have okay. uh, plus four to spells. A non-lethal crit would have been cool. <laughs> so, uh, now I'll roll for my damage. It was a 10. 10? <laughs> okay. So do you want to kill this guy? Um, no. No? So you're just going to clip him. So here's what happens. So your Eldritch Blast hits him, and he just, like, does a one of these, and then just, like, flips head over heels like 10 feet backwards because you're you just smashed him with your elder class and he just goes completely unconscious but he's like bleeding all over the place like he's not dead and he's not like he's just really broken well i hope someone has some healies to bring me carrying this dude <laughs> <laughs> we could just leave him <laughs> and, he right. and he just happened to fall in the forest <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to Rengar and I'm gonna use Lay on Hands, and I'm going to give him three hit points back. Okay, that's okay. Awesome. Nice. That's like a third of his life, and he's like, <laughs> and he's just like spitting up all this like gross blood that was in his throat. <laughs> and right, so he's I'm, like I'm barely even to be. He can like barely, he's like healed, me. and he's like waking up, but he's like still like one of his legs is broken <laughs> so like he's got some serious wounds um but he's stabilized and he's definitely not dying um and he, now he's conscious and in the back like from like way down the road oh from you know you hear this like wait, wait. and you hear some like a what sounds like a, a young man approaching you from the direction of the town. Let's knock this one out too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. But, 
Let me try He's to make like friends. He's like on the other first. side of a hill. You can't see him at all. You can hear is his voice. So I go up to Ragnar, and I kneel down so that he's still above me when he's laying on the ground. And I say, wouldn't it have been easier just to come with us? All that energy you put into attacking me could have been used to push me in the cart. And instead, you have to lay here broken and bleeding when you could have been a help to the town. You're a waste. My help. Screw you! <laughs> and he, you're leaning down, and he just like tries to spit up blood at you, but it said it's a tooth. <laughs> Gross! It's like a tooth. Just like can I? He doesn't have I, enough uh, strength to spit the blood at you. He just avoid like, getting hit <laughs> with the tooth. Yes, sure, yeah, I, it doesn't I, hit you. You're just like okay. Dogged uh, out of the way of the tooth. Commoners are so disgusting. <sighs> so I go back so, to brooding. What do you? What do you? Yeah, what do you guys want to do? Uh, I'm going to pick Rengar up and I'm going to put him in the cart. You're going to put him in the cart? Yeah. Okay. Is, so you have, a Reng, legs, you have a Rengar in the cart. His legs are broken. He's he's coming with us. Yeah, he has, he definitely has like a broken... It's like either a leg or an ankle. Yes, that's a good idea. He can make good bait. So should we wait for uh, the no. or should we keep going? I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think they're going to be offering uh, that help? That voice is getting slowly louder. If we're not going to use him as bait, we should at least let this other person drag him to town so we don't have to deal with him. But then yeah. we want the cart. We need the cart. He can drag you. Though. So well, we just keep walking and not come back to this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while you, guys are, while you guys are uh, discussing this, the voice starts getting louder and louder, and you see kind of a like a strapping young man in shoddily made leather armor kind of cresting the hill and he's like, wait! I'm gonna come with you! And then you hear the old drunken man behind him, the, the smith um, it's like, oh, you son of a bitch, you're not going anywhere with those adventurers! And he's all old, but he's like surprisingly keeping pace with his son. But they're like on top of the hill now. I don't know what to make of this This guy. must be... The Willard or whatever. I don't know. These human names, they just go in one ear and out the other. Whoever this guy is, let's uh, let him take our friend back to town. I will do That'll whatever work. you guys want to in this instant. <laughs> All right. What, what, what say we get uh, the old smithy to take Rengar back, tend his wounds, and we take Wallace with us? Sounds like a plan. I like it. Okay. So we wait patiently for them to show up. So they show yeah. up and they're like, oh my god, what happened to Rengar? He tripped. <laughs> he chose poorly. And Rengar's just like, that's such, they're such a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and without he doesn't so know like the, the, <laughs> the smith and the kid, the kid is like, oh shit, we gotta help Rengar. And the the smith is like, this guy's a son. He's like, Rengar's a son of a bitch. He probably deserved it. Let's just leave him here. Let's leave him for the birds. The inn would be better. <laughs> it could be better run by somebody else. Mm. And, yeah, but the kid me. refuses, and he's like, we got to get you to the to mom. And he starts to, like, picks him up and starts dragging his broken body back towards the, towards the village. He doesn't even ask oh, you guys. Wait, you can take the car. We can ask. Aren't you getting food for us? He looks strapping and strong. So what if he's a drunkard? Okay, so he's so he's like, oh well, that'll help. And he grab and him and the smith grab the cart, and then like thirty feet down the road, the smith just says, "Pick it up, boy. You can do it." And then like busts out a tankard and starts drinking while his son carries the cart. So what do you guys want to do? Mourn the loss of the cart. You said you can take it, so he just grabbed it, loaded it up. Mourn the loss of the town. Let's just <laughs> let's just go the other way. You know what? Let's take over the town. It's a pretty shitty town. Only <laughs> for mayor. Only for mayor. So what do you guys want to do? Act, I think that might actually be best for the town if it was under new management. Okay. okay. I, I you agree. About, you guys are and support hours this away. decision. You guys are a few hours away from the forest. You guys could go back and take over the town. I would not stop you. 
<laughs> yeah, these, these, these... Have to kill. <laughs> I don't think we need so, to kill anyone. Yeah, at, the, yeah, at the tavern, at the ta- tavern, there was maybe about ten to fifteen people in what looked to be shitty guard outfit, like guard armor and outfits. Mm. But they don't look like they were very well organized. They were all drunk. It looked like they just kind of threw some armor, all of the remaining armor, shitty armor and weapons, onto some commoners, some villagers, and called them guards. Will they really stop us, though? Because this guy keeps promising shit and not delivering, so... I don't know, maybe we kill maybe we kill a stag or something, and then one stag and bring it back and be like, hey, we're the ones who brought you food. This guy's not delivering. I like that idea. It's like a compromise. We'll bring them something back and then take over. Okay. I like it. Once they're well fed, we can force them to go out and take care of themselves. And I should get a good amount of spell practice in and complete my gnome springer. Let's we just go. need to be able to we just need to be able to teach them to fend for themselves. It seems like these people didn't have very good role models growing up. Mm, yes, I agree. Okay. Let's go. So what do you guys want to do? All right, let's go into the forest. Let's find some something to kill and then bring it back. Okay, so you guys... So if it's a few hours to the forest, it's going to be... Would you say it's going to get dark before we it's get gonna there? It's going to be starting to get dark, yeah. Okay. Like, when you guys get to the forest, it's going to start being getting dark. And at, the closer you guys get to the forest, the, like, you could start to note... Well, as it gets darker and the closer you get, like, the more noticeable this kind of, like, eerie, glowing blue mist is... That's just covering this endless, like near, like seemingly endless field of trees. So I'm going to make a suggestion before we do anything else. What say we camp for the night? Uh, I agree. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so you guys want to camp? I, I also think like how far idea. away from the woods? Uh, I'd like to go a decent distance away from the woods. Like a okay. twenty minute walk, say. Yeah. Okay, so you guys aren't near the woods. Okay, the mist starts rolling out, but it will, it does. As you guys make camp, you guys notice that the the, the mist does get denser and. Thicker. Can I make a nature check to figure out what, or Arcana to figure out what's up with these mists? Weird blue glowing mists. Which one do you want to make, nature or Arcana? Um, I'll start with Arcana. Okay. Because it roll. It, it, well, okay. First off, I'm a wizard. Does it seem magicy? Like, Roll your arcana check. You get okay. a from All what right. you Let's from from your wizarding school. This does not seem very natural. <laughs> okay, great. So here we go. But are. of what kind um, of nature it is? Like what kind of twenty four? Oh, you know exact. So this is a this this is a mist that pours out of the Fey realm, and it is notoriously, uh, kind of harmful to breathe. Unless you have some kind of potion or um, wake up juice, <laughs> yeah, some some kind of antidote. So what it does is it causes uh, exhaustion. It causes oh. like like literally causes exhaustion, as in your character gets ex- <laughs> as exhausted. Um, and then it lowers perception, and it. Um, causes can cause like a de, like a type of delirium. That sounds like fun and confusion. But yeah, this is very common in the in the Fey realm. So like basically, if you go to the the like the Fey like the Fey wild, this is this stuff is basically all over the place. Okay, so I relay all that information to the group. What do you guys think? We need Maybe to. This- Wake up juice, there's something to it. Who knows? Sounds yeah, like we need, we need to... some wake up juice. Yes, yes. Wake up juice right. back. We need a backpack. So let's camp and go first light. So you guys you guys you make the check, you study the fog, and then you guys go to sleep, right? Well, we're gonna set a watch, yeah. Yeah, set a ro- set a watch. Do you guys but are you guys going to you guys are camping here, right? Yes. What do you guys think? Okay. Mm-hmm. Or we could just walk back and sleep at the town. I definitely think we should probably... It would take you a few hours to walk back at this point. So by the time you guys get back there, it'll probably be closer. Now that you guys have already made camp, gotten to the woods, it'll probably be closer to like midday, midnight to almost 
you know, it'll be like one or two o'clock in the morning by the time you guys get back there. What do you guys think? Sleep in the dangerous, dangerous bay fog or try to walk back? Well, you guys are outside of it right now. You're not in it. Oh, okay. And it's stopping right. at the forest. All right. Well, yeah, then I think we can camp. I think we'll be fine. Okay. okay. Um, Let's do that. Can yeah. I get all three of you guys to make a perception check, please? Be that is a natural 20. Nat nice. 20? Before uh, you go to bed, you uh, see... You smell a, like, overwhelming floral scent. And it draws your attention to the woods, and you see this giant giant stag at the edge of the at the edge of the woods and it's just like staring at your guys camp kill it but with fire you you know but it looks like that one stag could probably feed like basically everybody in the village so it's at the edge of the mist you say yeah it's at the edge of the mist just staring at you guys okay and it you could like it's kind of shimmering a little bit in the fog is it a glitter stag? What would you? Does it have, what a, would, does it what have a cutie mark on its side? Did get, what else? Who else? What else? Did, what rolls did you guys get on your perception? I got an eleven. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so he's the only one who really sees it. Okay. You guys see like uh, kind sees of sees the blur. stag at all? Well, okay. no, he sees it clearly. Like he sees it. Okay. Perfectly. You guys just see this kind of blurry, big elk, like elk, like like elk, like figure. You know, not really. So, did you say that it was luminous? Kind of, yeah. So it's got this kind of luminous aura about it. Yeah, it Possibly. itself isn't like its skin isn't, but it's like giving off. It's giving off very clear, unnatural vibes. <laughs> I would say. Okay. Um, it, can I... Everything about it looks like a giant stag, except. Like the mist is kind of wavy around it. It's giving off like a little bit of an aura. Can I make an arcana check? Yeah. Uh, 14. 14. 14. Um, so you know that the stag itself isn't magical, but it seems to be under some kind of magical protection. Did we hear someone say Expecto Patronus? I was just typing that in. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks to be like it's under some kind of magical protection. All right. Um, so are the other guys asleep right now? Am I the only take? So no, the they're like, what? they all look like. We're you, just like. You saw it and you, they're just like groggily looking stuff. at this thing. Mm -hmm. But they okay. can't really make out what it is. You're the only one who can really see it. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say, look, guys, I, I know it might sound and look tempting to uh, go and try and get that stag right now, but there's something going on here. There's something more going on with this forest. If we were to try and hurt that stag, it's going to be bad news for us. I can feel it. When I say what stag, because I clearly do not see it. <laughs> Dude, Just, there's, a, there's a stag. Just did you them. drink some of that wake-up juice? No. Uh. This is all natural. Okay, so... Well, yeah, what do you guys hear? Do you guys hear, like, a whistling? So, uh, Uli, you kind of hear, like, a whistling or almost, like, like a whispering as well? Um, well? After you say, like, I should, I don't think we should hurt it or whatever, you kind of hear this, like, whispering. So okay, I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and focus on that and make a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 19. 19? So, do you speak Fey or Elvish? Uh, common, Infernal, and Orc. Okay, so it, you know that it is a lang like a, a spoken language, you just can't decipher the words. Um, but it doesn't sound menacing. It, like, it, it almost sounds like it, it's inviting you to come closer. It's Faye, yeah. All right. So we're just like hanging out around the campfire thinking you're crazy. I mean, you guys see like a shimmery, glowy thing in the 
in the mist, but you guys don't really know what it is, and you guys are like kind of squinting at it. He was like, From "What the heck is that thing?" Anything okay. having to do with the Fae is best avoided. Agreed. Yes. Yes. Same. So, should we just break camp and go? Well, it's still like oh. in the middle of the night, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think we've even gotten a chance to sleep. The the way I look at it is that if we were to try and go and hunt anything in those woods, it might be under the protection of whatever is protecting that stag. Perhaps it's best if we try and find a different hunting ground. Chipmunks it is. Mm. Chipmunks all the way. So what are, you, are you guys going to go to sleep for the night? Like it doesn't like the the stag doesn't look like it's exiting the woods. Um, is it staying in place? It's just kind just of staring at you guys. There? It's staring at your guys' fire. Is really. it like? It's not no. really threatening. The stag is just kind of staring at the fire, like kind of cautiously, almost trying to get. It looks like it's trying to get a, like a feel for who you guys are. And then I cast a voice minor in illusion in my hand to just make like a flame, and I just kind of wave it to see if it like looks at that too. Uh, no, it's it's like more looking at the campsite fire, but it looks at your your fire for a second and then just like shakes its head like it knows what you're doing, and then <laughs> and then looks back to your campsite. Well, we can either go investigate do? or go to sleep. Mm, I'm definitely not keen to investigate this uh, fey mystery. Yeah, I'm. Not too uh, thrilled about the Fae myself. But I do agree with our friend Uli here that if uh, this thing is here protecting it, protecting the woods, then chances are we won't do well to try and attack attack anything within it. Okay. So what do you guys want to do? Go to bed? You guys want to go? I think we need to rest before we do anything else. Yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah, resting sounds good. Okay. We'll let Lu- Uli uh, get the first watch since he did such yeah. a good job seeing that thing the first time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Uli's on watch. Uh, you guys are asleep. Since Uli is the one who saw it to begin with, while you guys are dreaming and he is awake, you guys all see this. Even though he's awake, he sees the same thing. It's basically, you guys all see this. Uh, a, you guys all see a sprite in very fancy, like it appears in front of you while you're awake, like a waking dream. You're not sleeping, but everybody kind of gets the same vision and it's a sprite and he's in like very fancy garb, but it's all made out of like golden leaves. And he says that his name is Tornacious or Thornacious. Sorry, his name is Thornacious and he introduces himself as the Prince of the Sprites. And he says, there is bountiful foods in, there is bountiful food in the Wearcoat Wood. But if you kill a living creature, which you guys can, t- can help yourselves to, but if you kill a living creature, I will fallow all fields and destroy you where you stand. Well, that doesn't sound good. So he uh, offers you guys, he, he's, he knows that, he basically knows what happened to the town. And he's offering you guys as emissaries for this, this city, so a way to get food. Um, and then he also offers, you know, if, you stay, if, you, if you go back to the village with a message from him, that he will help repair the fields that are around the village and they can harvest them themselves without having to go in the woods. But you have to Make sure that they do not enter that wood at all. Either. That Ooh. he wants Wait, the they town not enter or not kill anything. And in nobody there. can enter it. He will let oh. you guys go get food once for this festival, as long as you don't kill anything living. Sprites love a party. Yeah, well, that's but, all right. When they vote, when they vote Uli as mayor, I will make sure that no one goes into those woods. Perfect. So good call. He says you guys can come in. You can, guys can grab food for the festival, or if whoever is in charge of the village says that they will, they will like make a deal with the Fey to never enter that forest. He will 
help he'll like give you a bag of seeds to help the their food start growing around the village again magic because he he at oh i'm not gonna yeah <laughs> sorry i almost spoiled it for you so what, what do you guys want to do so for nations i have a question for you uh if i was to agree to this uh and okay. you would help us um replant those fields so that they are able to sustain the village those fields wouldn't be counted as part of this forest would they this is not about expanding the forest influence no no not at all no there's those they're they're normal human seed human food seeds for corn and wheat and barley and rye there's uh even some trees to grow an apple like apples you guys can start an orchard I'm going to do an insight check to see if he's lying. Okay. Uh, that is a 12. Um, you don't know if he's lying or not, but you don't. Also, you also don't know if he's being completely truthful. So it's just general fey Yeah, it's, it's very... He seems to be being purposely vague, but not lying. Very fey. Okay. Well, I could care less about this village. I say let's just get this over with. I say we uh, we take uh, his offer and uh, we over overthrow uh, Ragnar when we get back to make sure that uh, none of these villagers hopefully will enter into this forest. Mm -hmm. Sounds Absolutely. good. Let's he wake up and he, do it. He's seen them skirting the woods themselves. He's. He says that he's even killed. He's had one of the villagers killed for entering the woods, oh. because he the one a hunter went in a few weeks ago and sort did of. Did you turn him. him into food? Did I turn him into food? No. Why no? Oh. No, of course not. Did you Why turn him into a tree? Why would I? Maybe. <laughs> he might be a tree now. <laughs> he might be a tree now. I, he's not food yet. It might be. He's not food. We, we agree to your terms then. Let us get this food, and then we will make sure through hostile takeover that nobody enters this forest. So are you guys getting the one-time... So there's basically two deals. One-time only food, where you guys... He will give you passage into the Fey forest to go gather... Oh, I thought know. it was we could go in and get food and then go tell them. No, he... You guys could okay. go get one-time food deal, free, basically free passage mm. into the into this phase zone, or you guys oh, could go back to the village and tell them that they cannot. They're basically banned from the forest. Hey, but he will help them grow. Food. Let's not go into the fey. You take <laughs> over, and then everything's good in a few months, and then I can go home and be done with these disgusting humans. Everything that I know about human nature says that if I turn around and tell them don't go into the woods, the first thing that they're going to do is go into the woods. But that's what your sword is for. Well, how about how about we, we agree to the second term? We get all the seeds and whatnot, but we just don't tell anyone. Well, people will still wander into the forest, though, I think. What if we put up a sign? That's going to keep people out. <laughs> sign or a sword. So I think the sword's the way to go. Can we negotiate that they can just kill anybody who goes into the forest? So mm. here's what he says. That's a while good you guys, negotiation. While you guys are talking amongst yourself. Uh, Thornatius says, if anybody comes into this forest, I am going to take Silas as he's going to steal Silas and make her his bride, and he's going to kill Ragnar and fallow all the fields if anybody steps foot inside of that forest. Okay. Because Let's he's go love, back with the seeds. Love, he, wants, he thinks that the smith stole Silas from him. She used to come, she was the only one allowed inside the forest. And she used to gather herbs, and he would let her in, and he fell in love with her. And he wants her back, but... Let's go back with the seeds, and you take over the town, will help, of course, and then through your powerful leadership, if anyone goes in, we just give up and walk away. 
Yeah, it actually sounds like a not bad idea. We'll have done everything within our power that we can do. He said, well, he said, if you guys can't make up your decision, he will take a third offer. If you give him Silas, he will give the townsfolk passage into the, the Fey realm unharmed. That's the Undo. best offer of all. I've got some spells that can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I they can go gather the food from the Fey food themselves from the forest if you steal the smith's wife and bring him to the, the fey prince mm, i don't i don't think so that's not going to sit well with me uh Uli, I, this is up to you here man we're ready to be done with this and we have options to do that but it's all on you if if we if we if we look back at what our, what our mission is it is to provide food for this feast so we could go into the fey forest get the food leave it back with the village and then allow them to uh, self-solve their own problems. Technically right is the best kind of right. So let's do that then. I'm on board. So you're going to go in the forest, grab a bunch of food, and then leave? Yes. As yep. much as we can carry without the cart that I get away. Perfect. And then we'll have succeeded and completed the mission. Okay. So I have a question for you. And this is like out of character since it's 10. We are two hours of technically up. Do you guys want to do one last combat? Or do you guys want to do a little bit more RP stuff? Like a big boss fight? Or do you guys want to do the easy way? Not really the easy way out, but stuff. I'm easy either way. I actually have to get up really early in the morning, okay. so I kind of want to like wrap it up so that we can maybe give a few minutes to interact. Uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to talk about the session, um, sure. If that's okay with you guys. No, that's yeah. that's great. Okay. I say let's uh, we'll we'll call it at. We decided to go get the food. Okay, so yeah, you guys go get the food. He leads you. Uh, he, the sprite friend leads you to a tree called the Awakening Tree, and it has a face in it. Um, nice. May or may not be that hunter that went missing. Um, <laughs> Is that where the wake-up juice comes from? But it has, it's yes. like around its base, there's all these herbs growing. Uh, there's all these like apples. The one tree is growing a, an overwhelming amount of like varying fruits, like fruits. There's vegetables growing on the ground. Basically, any kind of fruit you can think of is growing on this tree. Um, there's bananas. There's apples. There's oranges. Any. No, we don't have the card anymore. The tree, there's a coconut up at the top. Um, you can grab whatever you want. It's a cool tree. And in the center, like in the mouth of the, like the face has a mouth, an open mouth, and you see just a stack of gold. In it. There's like, from first glance, there's over a hundred pieces of gold in the tree. And there's a potion in the middle. What do you guys want to do? Well, this uh, tree looks very poor. I, uh, we should probably leave its gold for it and just gather the food to go. Okay. I agree yeah. with this. Yeah. Okay, so so I'm, I'm going to fill up my backpack with all the fruit that I can put that I can put in there. Try and get a nice variety to make the villagers happy. Same. Okay. Yeah, so you guys, same. you guys do anything else in, else in the forest? No, nope. no. I know better nope. than to um, push my luck with the Fey. Yeah. Okay. So you guys. And we're not. Go? And by the way, I am not. I refuse to eat any of this food. Yes. No touching the food. Okay. So you guys don't we'll eat let the, the food. Village deal with that. You guys don't touch the money. You guys leave. Do you guys do anything else before you guys go back to town? You just guys just book it right back to town. Uh, I'm gonna have yep. some rations and some water because I'm a bit, a bit okay. hungry and thirsty. So you guys get back to town. Uh, a little bit before midday, they're still partying <laughs> from the day before. Um, and they see a whole bunch of vegetables and fruits. And they're like, thanks. Did you guys get any meat? What's Did we give them two fingers? This is the meat of the earth. Rangor <laughs> <laughs> so literally just... From probably about twenty-five feet away, he just says thanks and throws an amulet at each of you, and it's like glowing with uh, with magical power. 
And he says, "What? here's what they are. It says, as promised, here is a amulet of shielding uh, for each of you. It's a tiny leaf in, inlaid with gold and silver. Um, the leaf is not alive, but it changes colors. Um, and it basically does it like block projectiles um, or give you advantage on a single attack roll, like as a reaction, kind of how shield works. So it's basically a shield in an amulet. Um, yeah, keep in the teeth. But as these people start biting into the fruit, nice. You notice <laughs> that they just start like falling over asleep. They're not dead. But these people are biting into the fruit. They can't really help themselves. While you guys were traveling back, all of you kind of thought about eating it, even though none of you guys were super hungry and knew not to eat it. It still was like smelled really good and tried to get you to eat it. Um, oh, sorry. Um, Technically right. Yeah, so all, these, all the towns will kind of go into this weird like just weird sleep state and just pass out. So, well, I think we're now, done here. Maybe the amulets took a bite of an apple and just passed out and now you have a you're surrounded by just what look like corpses but they're not dead. Well, well now we can kill them and you can take over. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is your show, Uli. I'm done with this. They can stay here. Yeah, based on what we saw earlier, I think they all need a good sleep anyway. Uh... <laughs> Should we go on to the next town? I still yeah, have to complete my gnome springer. Yeah, let's just leave them. They're, they're good. They won't even yeah. miss us when we're on. Yeah. No, they'll get up in a few days. Days. Feast, They passed out. You guys got your treasure. Um, now, there's a bunch of sleeping people. Do you guys want to check them, or do you guys just want to take off? No, no, they're uh, good. They're good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Awesome. I don't want to filthy my hands by touching these commoners. Ugh. So that's we skipped a bunch, but that's basically the end of it. There is a the end. If you guys do go through the, the huge feast, I was so, very tempted to just say murder ho of the town. Oh my goodness, these people were annoying. <laughs> it says in the description of this article, like half the people are stupid and the other half are just greedy. <laughs> So it was kind of up to me. Um, there is like a few combats, but you can get through this whole thing without having a single combat, which you guys pretty much did. You guys can kill Rengar. You could fight a bear if you try to steal the gold, a giant bear, and that deer attack you. Um, but this is pretty much it. But there's like five different ways you could run this, and you guys pretty much just went the, the easy way. Good. Except for the easy. fight in Rengar. You easy. Guys well. You. That was, that still was no easy way when it came to those motherfuckers. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, what did you guys think? I thought that was, that was fun. fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I will be, I will be one second. <laughs> I like I like uh, getting more role play opportunities than combat. Combat's fun, but um, I'm I'm more a fan of the that other pillar of uh, role play and convincing people to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's it's definitely a lot more interesting. I feel like. Yeah, that's the first character I've that's the first character I've played that hasn't had any kind of like manipulation powers or influential oh, really? powers. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did a good job with the um, not wanting to kill them because I was sorely tempted there for uh, a lot of uh, that time. No, no. <laughs> if you did, I think there would have been more combat. I think it would have been PvP. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you you plan not to kill everyone, but these people they uh they kind of really they, they would have been better off, I feel. Yeah, well, who knows what's going to happen. Maybe we'll come back in 40 years or whatever and there'll be a bunch of trees. Oh, wait, you guys will probably be dead by then. But when I come back, there'll probably be trees, so that'll be interesting. Hey, happy birthday, Phoenix. Yeah, happy oh, birthday. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you to everybody in the chat who gave me birthday wishes. Yeah, it, it has officially rolled over into my birthday, so it's a great way that, to spend my birthday. Is that what you have to get up early for to uh, start the party? 
Well, yeah, we're actually going, uh, we're going to go do a bunch of wine tasting, so we're going out. Oh, nice. Time. You, you yeah, literally are starting the party. Yeah, I've, I've got my pregame going on here. And, <laughs> <laughs> right. But, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I picked go that ahead. one because it does. It didn't have a lot of combat. Um, yeah, I just that didn't was... want because combat can kind of drag on. It's fun, and there's a lot of dice yeah. rolling. Um, but it also takes a lot of time. Um, yeah. Yeah, we found some so, opportune moments to roll dice, so that was good. Yeah. So I want to. So like, if you guys want to do this again, um, I don't know. I just kind of. You guys could pick whatever you want. Yeah, you guys just let me know. I'm I'm happy to come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely fun. I I love. I don't get to play very often because I'm usually DMing, so I I definitely like playing. Same here. Um, yeah, I had fun with this character. He he was a lot of fun. There's a lot more to explore with him. Yeah, I feel like his authors were like almost like predisposition to DM, so uh, yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, we all DM all the time. So, but yeah, if uh, if, if anybody has any questions, I know it's a little bit uh, it, it's late here where I'm at in Texas, so uh, I know there's not uh, too many people watching right now. But if anybody has any questions, we'll be on for just a few more minutes. Yeah. That so. Was good stuff. Yeah, I like some of these comment, uh, some of these comments. Beer goggles. Um. Yeah, some of them was uh, uh, Mr. John uh, Aldridge is is especially was especially hilarious tonight. <laughs> right. I agree. <laughs> Duty. So I know a lot of these people came came in through um, your uh, author group, Phoenix. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Um, well, right now I'm working on book seven of The Realm Between, and then uh, I'm also working on the game, um, which which uh, I told you guys earlier was was a little bit slow going, but it's pretty much just based on on the book. So it's uh, I'm trying to make it a little bit lighter than D and D, but it's still a still a work in progress. And but how's book seven coming along? Smooth. For a while, it it uh, wasn't going going so well. You know, there's lots of stress with the uh, with this pandemic, but things are finally winding down. So I'm getting uh, I'm getting my myself back together, which is most important. I had to take a about a mental health week. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure everybody's feeling it. It's, I mean, our lives have changed uh, for pretty much everyone. So. Absolutely. Kind of, this this whole thing has been. We get to go for a uh, drive painful. tomorrow. It's gonna be great. Nice. Oh, yeah, you guys are opening up, aren't you? Yeah, we are currently in Queensland. We have 12 active cases. Oh, man, that's great. We haven't yeah. had, like zero, like, zero deaths from it in, like, a month. Uh, oh, about 101 deaths. The last one, I think, was um, uh, an 80-year-old in Sydney. Uh, New South Wales, at least, uh, last couple of days. But, yeah, it's been pretty full on because I work for a contact center for a government agency for small business. And, um, yeah, it's just been a bit nuts trying to make sure that we can provide all the assistance that we can for affected people. So it's that, that's been my big struggle <laughs> trying to yeah. get through all of this is doing, uh, you know, 10 hour, 10 hour days at the day job, having a six month old and also trying to write books. It just doesn't quite work sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it's the feeling you just get you just get through it. You just knuckle down and do what you got to do. No. Yeah, and I, you know, I want to touch on that a little bit about the whole taking care of yourself, giving yourself some mental health time. This thing has been really um, mind altering for a lot of people with uh, being stuck at home and, you know, just being inundated with bad news constantly. And it can it can really alter the way we live our lives. So it's important, you know, go outside, get some sunshine, go and and still live your life and try and not focus on all the bad stuff and not let it just seep into you because it can definitely take over. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, Nate asks, what else does everyone do to relieve stress? I play with my dog. <laughs> I have a dog That's and, a good one. and a, I have a cat that I call not my cat because it's not my cat. <laughs> um, it comes in, this cat just comes in through the dog door in the morning and just like crawls into my bed at seven o'clock, six o'clock. That's funny. So I we had a neighborhood the... cat. We had a neighbor, neighborhood cat called Jim Jim. And he was just <laughs> the, just the fattest cat you'd ever see. Um, <laughs> they just recently moved out, but, but I'm, I'm actually kind of glad I, I miss him, but I do not miss him doing shits on our front. 
<laughs> right outside our bedroom window. Yeah. That's yeah, but like you, you wake up, you like peel back the uh, the shutter, <laughs> and then you like see this cat like on your lawn. Oh, during during Australian <laughs> summer, like you can smell it the moment you wake up. Just oh hot, man, hot, hot cat shit no. sitting in the front yard. Nah, no, good. Thank not you. good. Yeah, this cat. Yeah, not my cat. Well, uh, I just I wake up and I just see this like meow, and it's just <laughs> screaming. And if my my door to my bedroom is closed, it just sits in front of my bedroom door, so it crawls into the dog door and just screams at my door until I open it. And then it comes up onto my bed and just like stares at me, makes sure I'm awake, and then just takes <laughs> off. And then we won't see him again for the rest oh. of the day. Let's just check in to see if you if you're dead yet, so then it can you know, eat you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I hang out with my cat and my dog. That's what I do. Oh, hang out with my girlfriend. Watch TV. Yeah. We've been watching some uh, trash really... lately. It's been great. Yeah. Trash TV is the best. Yeah, that, that Tiger, Tiger, Tiger King. Yeah. Like... Tiger King. Oh man, that thing was nuts. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, that's I threw like some a... I threw some uh, Tiger King references in book three. That I like to throw in little Easter eggs every now and then, and mm -hmm. there's definitely some in there from that. Because holy cow, that show was that is that is not indicative of all of America. Just so anybody knows, that place <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. that is such a weird, weird show. I, I saw I, I saw a joke shared the other day about someone who was. Uh, this, this is probably a little bit TMI, but they were they were doing some downstairs grooming, but their clippers stopped halfway through, and they said they had an, an, an underbush mullet, and they were going to call themselves Ho Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, well, do you, do we want to plug all of our books again? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, Nate's got a question Rocky. as well about um, TV shows. So. My uh, my pen name is BF Rock River. My book is Altered Realms Ascension. Uh, it is a darker, uh, grittier lit RPG. Not a lot of power fantasy. Um, lots of gore, violence, blood. Uh, crazy, crazy shit happening all the time. Um, but it's also a lot of fun. There's a lot of humor and stuff involved too. Um, it's about an NPC who gets turned into a player and has to save the world while dealing with all of his own personal problems. Came out nice. on last month on the 29th. So it's almost a month old. And it's the first book in a series that I plan to be five books long. Nice. Five or six. Nice. All right, Matthew. Uh, okay, so I write uh, Crematoria Online. It's got two full-length novels out at the moment. Um, there's Rise of the Crimson Order and Legacy of the Blood Reaver. Both of those have the uh, a main character who's a detective. So he has uh, all of these abilities so he can find clues at crime scenes and put all the clues together. And he wields a flip-lock pistol and a sword and has a sick ginger beard. Um, but there's also a short story in that called 30 to 50 Feral Hogs. Um, that I wrote in two days and just decided to publish. Um, <laughs> but I'm nice. working on I'm working on a villain book at the moment in set in Crematory Online. So it's a, it's going to be a bad guy book, um, just connected to the series, but not featuring the same characters at all. It's totally totally separate. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right, and I wrote uh, Prime Verse. I've got two books out right now: Prime Verse Forced Login and Prime Verse Dose of Chaos. Um, the third one is Trial by Magic, and uh, it's kind of a, a witty, survivalist, snarky, humorous uh, MMO, you know, isekai kind of um, digital afterlife series where uh, the players are brought into the world unwillingly, their meat bodies are discarded, and they have to exist from that point on in a digital world that has no NPCs, so they, they have to uh, figure out life and how to deal with that. And at the same time, they have to deal with other people that uh, were antagonistic, let's say. Um, I get some positive feedback on how horrible my villains are, so you might want to check that out, too. And then, of I course, we've got the most of the show. The first book is really good. Oh, yeah. thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Spawn really. campers. Yes. Yeah. Spawn <laughs> camping. Oh, man. Spawn camping's a big deal in book one doesn't happen so much in book two, thankfully, but it is a big deal. It, it's something, you know, I've tried to find 
stuff that I'm like, hey, this is a digital universe. What is what are the kind of things that actually happen in video games a lot? And that's one of the ones that um, came up. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that'll be fun. I don't think I've seen this come up a whole lot. Uh, so it, it, it was fun to write. And I've, I've got the third book coming along. And then um, that'll end the first arc. And we'll see what happens from that. Um, that was Prime Verse Forced Login was the first book. And then Dose of Chaos was the second book. And then we've got the host here, Phoenix. Tell us about The Realm Between. So, um, yeah, I write The Realm Between. I'm on book uh, seven right now is what I'm writing. Uh, book six launched uh, not too long ago. It's uh, basically about a guy who uh, ends up in a coma, doesn't realize he pretty much signed his life away to the company he works for, and uh, gets stuck in a video game that's actually still in development. So uh, there's a lot of things that, that change during it, and uh, basically the game is supposed to help him get out of this coma, but uh, people also die because it's still uh, kind of a development, and uh, they haven't worked all the kinks out yet, so um, death is a very real possibility, real death uh, in the series. It's kind of dark. There are a few lighter parts, but um, it, it definitely edges more on the, the epic fan side of things. But... Uh, yeah, so so that that is all of us, and um, I will. Uh, you should definitely check out these guys. These guys work, and uh, on the Realm Between page, uh, I posted a couple of posts where you can uh, click on links to get to their books. And of course, if you're in my newsletter, I also have uh, put out some newsletters with some links uh, for uh, for you guys to work. So uh, definitely, uh, everybody who's been watching this should 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 check out all these awesome authors. Um, I think we're going to be uh, wrapping it up for tonight, uh, and I just want to thank everybody who has watched this, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed playing it, because uh, I've really had a blast doing it. Yeah, me too. Uh, me too. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, That was great. If you guys want another DM, I'll do it. <laughs> All right. I, I'll, be, I'll, run. I'll run it. Hey. Happy birthday, Phoenix. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Sleep hey, you. What's the day your the actual woman. birthday, or is it? Huh? Is today your actual birthday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that it's rolled over past midnight, it's my actual birthday. There you go. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys. And uh, we will uh, see you guys in another video. Good night. Thank awesome. you. Good night, guys.